Um, Simon, what about this? Our friend uh, over in Spain, Javier Tebas, has yes. just been speaking, uh, La Liga chief, and he says, club states are as dangerous to football's ecosystem as the Super League. We were critical of the Super League because it destroys European football, and we are just as critical of Paris Saint-Germain. Yeah. He says, uh, TV revenue in France has fallen by 40%. Yeah. Paris Saint-Germain salaries have risen 500 million. He says this is untenable. Yeah. He's not wrong. I mean, he's a hypocrite, but he's not wrong. I mean... He, Why is he a hypocrite? Well, because he has presided over transactions in his league. Um, he made ag- allegations about Man City breaking the transfer system and being responsible for an untenable marketplace because they drive the prices up when they when their transfers don't bear any resemblance to the transfers of the teams in his league. His league are the ones that are buying Coutinho for 150 million quid or XYZ amount of... or whether it's Eden Hazard for 100 million quid and Gareth Bell for 100 million quid. So it's slightly ludicrous, his assertions. He was very interested in being involved as a Premier League chief uh, when Scudamore stepped down and yet he's taken swipes at the Premier League. So there is an element of hypocrisy, but that doesn't mean that the underlying message that he is imparting is wrong because there is the ESL is a byproduct of clubs like PSG, Manchester City and Chelsea driving up the price of the marketplace from player salaries to player transfer fees. And I'm less concerned by transfer fees because you can capitalise those. Player salaries are the bigger problem. And ultimately, those clubs that don't have much governance or have any restrictions upon their economics are driving the system into a place where things like the European Super League become a necessity because you cannot stop this train of player salaries and player demands going up and up and up because clubs like these don't care about stopping these trains. Mm, mm. So he's not wrong in that respect. (laughs) On the eve of Real Madrid, I think the the final bid was a phantom bid, but on the eve of Real Madrid putting in a bid for 220 million euros for a player out of contract. It's almost slightly laughable, but he's not wrong. I make the point again, he's not wrong. He's coming from a position of vested interest and self-interest about what's happening in his league because at least you can turn around and say he's put some governance in place. He's told these clubs in Spain, you will now run your businesses properly, you will have a 70% wages to turnover ratio and that's what you will do. And look what's happening. Barcelona are being forced to cut their cloth. Real Madrid are being forced to cut their cloth. And people mistake transfer fees for um, a, a breach of financial fair play. If you if you buy somebody for 100 million quid, Jim, they're still worth 100 million quid in a day's time. But every time somebody comes on with £500,000 a week wages, mm. that 500000 is it automatically a profit impact. Yeah. So the wages are the issue, and he's right to bring it to the fore. He's but, right but, to keep on Simon's with And Simon's also right, Trevor. This is the same Javier Tebas who presided yeah. over La Liga during, during the era of the Galacticos at Real Madrid. Yeah, I think I it's mean, sour grapes. It's sour grapes because he's not being able to do the business that maybe La Liga wanted to do um, mm. with individuals, but also the league itself is suffering. Uh, but I, I agree with Simon, you know, there's got to be a, a wage cap um, in the Premier League as well. I think it should be all over Europe because teams are, are, are spending too much money and, and they're not getting the finances through the door. But what I would say is the clever football clubs and the clever businesses uh, will find ways around it because they'll bring more commercial deals into the football club yeah. which will then allow them to pay these wages Trevor, so I don't know how you can stop it but it's got to be the timing of this Simon and he, he says that in the morning that Barcelona's mm. wars continue uh, yep. uh, you know they've got to shift Antoine Griezmann out on loan to Atletico yep. Madrid yep. They, they lost out in Messi they've said goodbye to them I mean Barcelona players, take, had, players yeah, it's, taking wage they had a shadow of themselves sign, but in fairness sign sign in fairness it's incredibly brave what they're doing in Spain because it's inherently unfair they're not allowing the dispensation for all the losses of revenue that COVID has brought on. If, you, if you've had 200 million taken out of your cash flow and your wages to turnover ratio is 70%, that's 140 million pounds of wages that you can't have on top of the existing pool you've got. So it's a really brave decision because everyone else around Europe is saying, we accept that you've had all these losses from COVID, so we'll allow you to project your figures based upon the 19 So is it a mistake then, Simon, that he's made well, at th- this time? No, I don't think it's a mistake. I think it's, I think it's called courageous governance is about breaking the mould of gutless football bureaucracy and saying that's enough. But not when um, you're shooting, shooting your own league well, in the 
the foot well, at this time. Well, it depends what you want to achieve. If you want to achieve a proper football pyramid that benefits not just two or three clubs, yeah. then it's the it's the strong indication of it. And Barcelona and Real Madrid have had it away for too long. You look back on Madrid, it wasn't so long ago that they weren't able to compete in the Champions League unless they sold their bit of wasteland on the side for 100 million quid mm. to be able to meet the obligations of financial fair play to play in the Champions League. Yeah. So they've gotten away with murder. So it's brave in the, in, and it's flying in the face of it. I don't think it's sour grapes. I think it's a, a call to action. I think it is PSG cannot legitimately sit in a press conference despite the fact they dispute it and they push it back and say don't talk to us about financial fair play talk to us about the wonderful signing we've made mm. we'll take care of our finances it is totally and utterly implausible to suggest that they can increase their wages by hundreds of millions of pounds with their turnover going down covid losses on top and yeah. still yeah, but you stay say that, within financial you say fair play. their yeah. turnover going yeah. down massively Lionel messi sold a hundred and something million pounds worth of shirts in the first couple of oh, weeks don't be silly of course he didn't sell a hundred million pounds of well, shirts that, that, that's trevor. the rumors that are going that's well, what's well, being well, said well, that, that, but trevor that's commercially nonsense. if you're that's bringing nonsense. in lots of yeah. lots of millions of pounds commercially you, a, a lot more because trevor, of the players you're bringing trevor, in who are you bringing it in for you're bringing it in for the shirt manufacturer They'll get a proportion of that. They don't get the hundred million pounds. If it, it's, it's sake, but any company that wants to be be part of Lionel Messi, and, and they're going to bring I, I money to PSG. But in order, in order for PSG to be able to absorb this massive increase in wages, coupled with the reduction in the TV money, coupled with the loss of gate receipts, they're going to have to do well, seven hundred million a year. There isn't a football club in the world that's doing 700 million a year at this moment no, time. Not no, possible. No, it's so a they are I'm not, I'm not sure. saying they are, but what I am saying is when they bring in individual, I'm not talking about the collective uh, Liga situation, their, their finances with the TV stations yeah. or their finances with the, the lack of in, uh, money that they're bringing into yeah. the game. I'm talking about an individual football club with their personal... Um, I understand that, Trev, but 50 to 60% of every football club's revenue comes from broadcast deals. Man United are huge. They've got huge stars themselves, right? But the 60%, 70% of their turnover will be the broadcast deals the Champions League money the TV money from the broadcasters 170 million from, te- from, from Sky and BT and the overseas rights for, for the, for, for the uh, so for why the- don't the Premier League and the FA do something similar then well, there is a $64 million exactly. question. Exactly. Why wouldn't they? Why couldn't they? Why shouldn't they? Because there has to be... Because what the Premier League has said is if we do this, we'll be disadvantaged. Look at the Spanish leagues. Look at the Serie mm, yeah. oh, we'll be. The- yeah. They've done it. So is it They've like a it. domino effect? Everyone's well, we going to do it. So. Hope- Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.